Hi everybody. This episode is dedicated towards the South African Koi Keeper Society Bloemfontein show. And what we want to do is showcase to you, we're in studio as you can see, and what we're going to do is we are going to take you through uh, the idea of how a koi show happens. For those of you that are new to uh, koi fish, you'll be able to get a very good idea next time there is a koi show, you can see it. But also, this has been live streamed, so you are able to have a look at that as well, but in length. So, but this is a condensed version of the Bloemfontein show. So right, whilst we're in studio, as I said, what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, just start off by on the Friday, uh, there's what they call a benching. Uh, process and what happens is is that every uh, entrant uh, that has their koi fish they then transport them and then they bring them to the site now the site has already been prepared with portable ponds uh, set up with oxygen and so forth and they've tested the water in this instance it was boil water which is really very good for a show and constant boil water um, to re refresh the water as and when required so with the result is, is that what is benching? Benching is really where the uh, judge, the chief judge, would, as the fish arrives uh, in transit, would then bag the fish, unbag the fish, and put the fish in the water, and then would size the fish, and also categorize the fish. Now there are very various varieties of koi fish. The, uh, so what happens is, is that he would earmark, for instance, he'll say, this is a kohaku and it is 20 centimeters or 50 centimeters. Uh, so they've got to be accurate on that. Now, each entrant has photographs of their fish so that the judges are able to make sure that it is the right fish. And then what they do is they mark on the back that it is a kohaku, for instance, and at 55 centimeters. That's important because it then gets categorized in the various size categories. So right, once that has happened on the Friday, then what happens on Saturday morning, the judges arrive and uh, they then start doing a review. They walk around and have a look and exercise their minds just in terms of what is available. And then what they do is they go down to specifics. Now, what happens first and foremost is they get the reserve uh, grand champion, the reserve champion and the grand champion. They then do that first because that is ultimately the first and second prize of the show, the big prizes. So once they've got rid of that, um, they then they don't uh, publicize it. They only wait and do that on the prize giving. But then it's a whole day process where they go to each and every fish and net it, bowl it, and have a look at the quality and discuss and then debate about what position that fish should take. First place, second place, and so forth. Then what we do is on, a, on the Saturday evening after the judging has taken place, then it is more a relaxed uh, environment where they then have the um, they have a function and that's normally dedicated towards that particular chapter in this instance Bloemfontein show and it is really a fundraiser so it's a lot of fun elements where they have from koi fish right through to koi caps uh, koi shirts koi jackets uh, koi memorabilia the badges is a very sought after thing where uh, around the world collectors collect and they basically get that to, uh, to auction off uh, so that they can raise funds. So after that pleasantries has happened, then on the Sunday morning, that's when the formal prize giving gets taken place. The honor is bestowed on the grand champion. In this instance, it is Mr. Hannes van Asvirken, that one grand champion at this show and he gets an opportunity to speak and we've done an interview with him as well we've had that fortunate uh, opportunity to do that to explain how he got there and what it takes to be a grand champion okay as you know the prize giving has been handed out it's happened and uh, now it's time that we speak to a champion you know ever so often a person arrives in a hobby such as koi 
and so many people look up to a champion like Hannes. And uh, I saw that just now, whilst everybody was busy, there was a comment of one of the visitors that came along and looked at uh, Hannes's grand champion and said, one day. And that's what it's all about. It's the inspiration that a champion gives to, uh, to, to everybody else to want to have koi fish and to enjoy the hobby the way it should be because it's a family hobby as well. Hannes, I don't know where to begin when I have a look at so many awards that you've got. It's absolutely fantastic. But also, you know, uh, you're a role model to me as well uh, and to many, many people around the country. And uh, we greatly appreciate the dedication that you've put into this hobby. It's absolutely fantastic and a legacy that you're building. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Grand Champion. What does it take to get to this level? Uh, Kevin, I think it's a lot of everyday work, looking at your pond, uh, holding. I mean, absolute key is your water quality. Uh, I mean, as you know, you've been to my pond a few times for visits and to make sure that your fish is always parasite free. And then obviously uh, feed the best food like a curry. That's our only feed a curry. Okay. And that gives me tremendous results. Okay. And any little, obviously everyone, every champion has a secret. Um, that, uh, but if you can give some advice to a person that is wanting to grow a fish that size, uh, what would you say is, is the most important thing apart from a good quality food? Um, what, what, what would you say that's the first thing that they must have a look at? I think the first thing is absolutely look at the bloodlines, look at where the parents comes from and the sizes that they've grown. And when you look at a fish, when you choose it inside a pond, you look at the shearway first, the white. So if you, there's 100 fish in the pond, you look at the fish with the best white. Right. And that's where you start. And then you start sorting them out like that. And you take the three or four that you look that has the best white and the best pattern. And then you look at all the other criteria on the fish. And then you know, when you know you, the parents, you know that that fish has the ability to get to a size. And I think that is the key to buy this fish, especially Gosanki. And you've also now spoken about parent, which uh, and, and you've also got an award for locally bred uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. A local guy here, Koya uh, Jungle, uh, France, he has bred those fish and I had this argument with the guys regarding the food issue for a long time. And that was now the proof that those fish can, those fish can compete with overseas fish if you feed them and give them the same conditions as what we give our top koi. And that is what's been proven. I mean, and that is stunning quality fish. No, absolutely. Yeah. It just shows you that uh, with good bloodline, you can have yes. a success. Do you, do you prefer to, 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 to purchase fish um, at, at, at a tartar koi stage? Um, in other words, um, at a, uh, an, a, a nisai? Uh, or, 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 do you, or, or do you balance right throughout? Uh, Kevin, I buy Jambai Tosai very often and uh, there's quite a few of them at the show now that's been grown out to 76, 80 cm. Uh, but I think I prefer the Nasai because it saves you a bit of time to get to the bigger sizes and to be a competitive koi if, you want, if you're serious about showing. Uh, so for me, the Nasai is the challenge to get them then to Gosai and uh, to competitive level. Okay. Let's talk about the grand champion. Um, the breeder? Uh, the breeder is Momotaro. Uh, it's been brought in by WCB, Michael Siegel. Um, in fact, he's bought quite a few of these koi from Tosai. What, I was with him in Japan as well. And the reserve champion that's here uh, was chosen, and I still have a Sankey that me and Tanaguchi uh, uh, actually having a competition. That one is in Ascuri, and I'm actually competing against him with this koi this year that's won the reserve champion. So that is quite nice when you start get to know the breeders. Yes. And you can have personal interaction with them. Even if they're in Japan, you still have interaction with them on Facebook or WhatsApp sometimes. Yes, yeah. yes. 
Well, Hannes, um, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to say about your uh, your grand champion. No, I, I just think it's it's a privilege to own a fish like that, Absolutely. and. The big challenge is to keep them alive as long as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But Hannes, uh, once again, it just shows your, your love and your passion for, uh, for Koi. And um, we appreciate it very, very much. And once again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you are, folks. You've heard from an expert. So uh, start for those that are starting up. Just listen to, have a look through the videos that we've sent through and, um, and you'll be able to uh, you know, speak to the local uh, koi, koi experts. But uh, you've heard it from a champion exactly where to start and uh, what advice. So thanks very much. Thanks for watching. So... If you want to have a look a little bit more on the uh, sessions that have been uh, recorded live stream, uh, they are still available. And if you want to have a look at that, just uh, go on to We Are Centurion and you can go and uh, have a look under Koi Medic and you'll find all of the sessions at length for your leisure. So that in a nutshell is what the show is, is, is entails. Also, a very, very important thing is then on the Sunday morning before the prize giving, all the judges get together and they do a presentation on the reserve champion and the grand champion. They discuss and share with the public, which we will be sharing with you as well, the positives about the fish, why that fish was selected and um, why it, 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 it uh, merited that particular prize. Reserve and then Grand Champion. Grand Champion, obviously, they put more focus on because that's the ultimate prize. So come along with us and have a look and see. You'll be able to pick up some really, really good tips on what the judges look at. So in future, when you want to choose a fish, remember everything that, you, that, that they judge on is above the lateral line. In other words, when you're looking down in a pond, that is what they judge. They don't judge what's under the belly, for instance. Morning, good morning, um, welcome. Uh, we've just had a very successful Free State 2021 Koi Show. It's our first Koi Show in South Africa virtually in two, two, over two years with the virus. So very well done to Free State on managing to put this Koi Show together. As you can see, we have uh, hygiene between all the ponds to prevent any contamination. Uh, we had the Koi show yesterday, quite an involved uh, lengthy day of all the judges walking around comparing all the Koi in their different categories and varieties and sizes. The first thing the judges do at the beginning of the day is they go around and they, they pick about five nominations of the, the biggest and what we consider the best Koi in the Koi show normally from the size 9, the biggest size, over 75 centimetres. We then go and deliberate uh, at length and we come back and look at least three or four times. We narrow it down and then we uh, look at all the, have a big discussion again on the, on the merits and demerits of, of the koi. This pond here has what we, we have the second best koi in the koi show, the reserve grand champion. Um, it's an, an 82 centimetre, what we refer to as a maritain. Kahaku, it's a three-step, which we call a sandan pattern. Kahaku are basically a white-based fish with a red pattern. We call the, the red, we refer to it as he or Benny. Um, this koi has a phenomenal body. The biggest point on judging is the body. Um, the most, most points are we award for that in our judging criteria. Then we go into the quality. The quality is, is overall in all the different colors. Uh, the skin etc and then we go on to the pattern as well that's not all about pattern um, we look at uh, lastly the finishing on the koi which is on the day we're judging on the day as the koi presents so it may be in a better condition on the day or not and uh, the luster of the koi the shine on the skin etc we're just going to try and lift the koi a little bit we we don't really bowl these big koi obviously to prevent any damage and this is as far as we go, just to raise the koi so that we get a better viewpoint of the koi. Um, 
I'm just going to ask for a few comments from the fellow judges. I'll start with Mike Harvey on the right chair. He's our, one of our certified, our two certified judges in South Africa. And um, Mike, uh, just a few comments where we started with the body on the koi. Yeah, uh, one of the most important aspects of uh, judging is the body shape. Uh, we give 40% of the marks, theoretical marks, uh, to body. Uh, this koi has a really beautiful body, beautiful symmetry from the head down, very thick peduncle. Uh, so from a body shape, can't fault it. Uh, then we look at uh, the quality of the he, the shiroji or the white or the red, um, and uh, that we allocate a theoretical 30 points to. Uh, and this koi has uh, beautiful he and shiroji. You can see the white very strong. Then we go to pattern. 30 percent. Uh, sorry, 20 percent goes to pattern. Um, and we look at the characteristics of each variety uh, and what that pattern should be. We like to see a uh, pattern on the head, body, right through to the tail, and it balances. Um, this one particularly has a, what we call a maritin, uh, the, the he marking on the head, and the, the similar marking right at the back, which actually balances it out nicely. Um, that's pattern, and then 10 percent theoretical goes to uh, what we call state of finish. That's the luster, uh, the how well developed the he is, uh, and obviously this koi has a beautiful finish as well, um, and a well-deserved reserve grand champion. Yeah. Chaps, to, gentlemen, to, to get a koi to this state of finish at this size, I know uh, the owner, uh, Mr. Hannes van Asperken, bought this koi from a koi farm called Taniguchi Koi Farm in Japan. I've been fortunate to go there on a number of occasions. He's a fantastic koi breeder. He was described by a man who we refer to as Kato-san. He's now deceased. He was a past chairman of our world koi organization, ZNA. And he described Yuichi Taniguchi as the young, the young hope breeder of Japan for his future of koi breeding. So he highly respected the gentleman where um, Hannes obtained this fish. And he's grown it on substantially, Hannes. So it speaks volumes to the koi keeping ability of Mr. Hannes van Asperken. Yeah. That means that his pond situation is perfect, his filtration, his water quality, his feeding regime, and his very careful observation of the koi on a daily basis to check if it has any, if it's developing any viruses or sicknesses or any damage. And then, of course, he had to transport these koi all the way from Freiburg which is no easy task, and to get a chair and present it in this state of finish is a, is a hang of achievement. Um, I'll just ask Harry Bex, our other certified judge, um, just a few comments on the presence of this koi. We also look at the presence in the pond. Hi. Um, Mike has alluded to the, the pattern and the balance. The Maritain Kahaku is one of the most difficult to achieve. It has to be born like that. You can't make it like that. Um, and it's rare, very, very rare. So that it's, we, can, we can't really see it swimming here, but I think uh, Harry also alluding mm. to the way it swims. In the pond, it's got a, quite a presence. You see it's got a very powerful body. We also look at the tail piece of the... If a koi has a beautiful front part, but the tail is very thin, then obviously it, it lets it down and it makes it uh, not look in proportion. This has got a very powerful overall body with a very thick, what we call the peduncle at the tail. And it's 82 centimeters. 82 centimeters, yeah. It's still a relatively young koi, so this koi will probably still grow um, anything up to another 10, 15 centimeters. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing it at a, at a show again in future. Anybody else would like to say something the, here? The, the, that's an absolutely incredible fish, and yet it's not the best fish on show. It's the second best, as a reserve grand champion. The main champions in that point. If everyone's happy, should we move over to the, the main uh, koi in the show? Any questions? On this fish. All happy. We're going to move over there. Chaps, uh, we, here we have the pond of the 
the best fish in the Koi Show. Koi Show is Free State Koi Show 2021. This is just under 90 centimeters, so it's quite substantially bigger than our reserve grand champion. And again, I think we've just discussed the first thing we look at is the, the body and the big fish and the presence. And if you look in this pond and you look at this fish, it, it's a massive body and a massive presence in the pond. I'm going to hand over to, to Mike Harvey here just to say a few things on how we deliberated between these two koi and reached this decision that this was slightly better than the other koi in the other pond. Right. Uh, well, I think the body shapes are both excellent. Uh, what you might notice is that the Grand Champion has a slightly different hue of red, the he, to the Reserve Grand Champion. It's a slightly more orangey uh, tinge, but what we look for is the thickness and quality and the edge, what we call kiwa, which is the back end of the red pattern of the scales. Uh, there it has good definition uh, and, again, very good white. Uh, often you find on large koi like these uh, that the head can tend to be a little bit creamy or yellow. Uh, and if you look at this, an 89 centimeter fish, and look at the whiteness on the head, uh, it's really impressive. Um, so, yeah, again, all the body shape issues. One of the things we also always look at at body shape is the pectoral fins, which we mustn't forget. We like to have nice rounded pectoral fins at the edges rather than what we call sickle shaped uh, fins. And again, beautiful fin finage uh, and very little, if anything, to fault on this koi. Really beautiful. Just to add, um, interesting guys, when we consider the pattern, a pattern in a koi does not have to be symmetrical. As you can see here, the red heat pattern is almost asymmetrical. The biggest point to the pattern is that it balances down the koi. So we'll start from the front, from the head, and look how your eye is drawn all the way down the koi because of the balance to the pattern, be it an asymmetrical pattern. It pulls your, your eye straight from the nose. It's complemented by the white in the front. And then you get all your red um, wrapping patterns going all the way down like a stepping pattern but large red markings which are much more impressive than small little markings very bold and then right at the back of course there's a break before the tail with white again to complement and enhance and obviously the siroji which is the white skin is also enhanced by the the strength of the red he patterns the consistency and the sharpness of the red at the back, the kiwa, and the, on the front of the red, where it underlies the white scales, there's very little bleeding red, or benny, which we call sashi. So the koi is very well finished in terms of overall um, appearance. This koi was a Momotaro koi farm bred koi, which is another very large koi farm in Japan. Uh, Dasuki um, is the, the chap there, Dasuki-san. And they're not only famous for their amazing koi, but equally they have one of the best sports car, luxury sports car outlets in Japan. So they not only have Bugatti sports cars, but virtually Bugatti koi as well. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite a privilege to go there. It backs onto a very big river in Japan. And the koi um, farm itself is massive. Um, they've got a one million litre koi uh, show pond inside one of their halls inside which is, you have to visit it if you go to Japan. It's quite, quite amazing. Um, Harry, would you like to say anything on, on the koi overall? One of the amazing parts about the, the, the fish we have here and the quality is that a little town like Bloemfontein, it has suddenly blossomed from being a tiny little show to a st substantial show. I mean, fish like this, you don't see it every koi show. Also, um, people come from far and wide, um, and there's something for everybody. You know, for the small koi keeper, for the big koi keeper, they all compete equally. Yeah. Again, sorry, this is also owned by Mr. Hannes van Asvik, and so he's done extremely well. Best koi in the, in the show, and the, the second best koi. So a massive kudu to Hannes.
One of the things I just wanted to mention, if you look at this grand champion, look at the shape of the head and how beautiful, it, it's not a sharp point, it it's, flows beautifully from the front right across without having a pinched nose or this head often in, in big koi tends to be slightly smaller than desired, whereas this koi has really beautiful light lines with the head flowing straight through to the body. Very impressive. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> um, we, chaps, if anybody would like to, to ask us any of the, the public here any questions, you're welcome to, I, I think, if we've got a bit of limited time, but... Um, I ask a question. From a judging perspective, Thank you. how do the judges deal with, with he in the dorsal fin? In, in the dorsal fin? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll let Mike explain, but obviously on the size of the koi comes into it. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, if it's the whole dorsal, ideally the dorsal should be white. Start off from there. Uh, bleeding into the dorsal is a... I won't say a serious demerit, because it's not a serious demerit, but it is a demerit when you're judging. Uh, but particularly in a smaller fish, it would be more of a serious demerit than in a fish. You know, you cannot expect perfection in any fish. Um, so yes, we'd like to have seen a purely white there, but it's almost irrelevant in a fish this size. Okay, okay thank you. Yeah. I think also the white line, if you look at the line of the fish, the white from the head going through, and you look at the dorsal, it may be he bleeding in slightly, but um, it's still got the overall white line right down, including most of the, the dorsal. So it's not a, not a major detraction if you look. The koi is so big and of such a good quality, it's, it almost fades into insignificance, the tiny bit of red that's in there. And, it, and where it is, it's, it's pretty much in one sort of in it's quite pattern. strong in one pattern and it's not untidy or with the little streaks or anything like that okay. yeah basically i see it follows up from a dam absolutely not out of shira yeah yep yeah. 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 Okay. any other questions yeah. chaps yeah. Jim? i just wanted to reiterate the point that i think uh, harry made earlier that the overall quality of the fish at this show is is, is astounding and um uh, the Free State chapter is not one of Sachs's biggest chapters. Uh, it's not the biggest chap chapter, but it has put on uh, a tremendous show with tremendous quality fish. And uh, the fish, that, the, the koi that came second here, would win at many shows. Um, and, and this, and, and this uh, <coughs> grand champion would probably, uh, probably win at shows around the world, it, this would be in contention. 100%. It's such a high quality of fish at this show. Okay. Any more questions? Any other questions, chaps? Okay. All right, so, um, I think that concludes our discussion on the, the Grand Champion 2021. And uh, we'll hand back to, to the, the chaps at uh, the interviewer, Kevin Till. Dean, I think yeah. we can all just give a round of applause for these beautiful fish. Yeah. 100 percent. And as I said a couple of times on the show uh, and uh, during the show, you know we can't possibly have a koi show without without judges. Um, it's, it's it's a critical part, and we learn all the time from you, and we're so grateful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank it's you. only our pleasure. I think I'd. I'd